in accordance to okay i guess they can do in accordance with governor ned lamont's executive order i'd like to call this um weathersfield advisory committee for people with disabilities meeting oh. you're in seventh to okay. order all those in favor aye aye, aye. oh yeah okay any introductions um it's understood i think now we know we no longer have a secretary so i think um Jaleem, do you want to play secretary today? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll try my best. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so um, Mr. Secretary, could you call the first item on the agenda? Uh, yes, it is. Sorry about that. Um, introductions. No members. Any introductions? No, no introductions this meeting. I guess we'll move on to the next next item. All right, uh, public comments. I don't believe we have anyone from the public up here. <clears throat> okay. Um, no one in the public for comments. So I guess we'll move on to the next item. Is our new business. <clears throat> New business. Uh, so we we need a motion to approve the minutes from the last two meetings, right? I yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the last two meetings. Can I second my uh, own minutes? Uh, yeah. I, I was going to say second too. Sorry, I was okay. Going for the button. Good. Thank you. Hi, Cindy. I, I got the second email now that has this tonight's meeting link. So I sent you an uh, email, Jaleem. Just ignore it. <laughs> no problem. So I think we're in the middle of approving the minutes. Are all those in favor of the mi minutes? Or aye, aye, aye. Okay. Um, so uh, I guess let's go back to new business. Um, as far as new business go, I mean, Catherine, do you want to talk about some of the stuff that we've been discussing or you want me to start? I think we'll leave off part. Um, you start. So as we had discussed in previous meetings before that the committee had a, uh, the committee had a spot in the town's budget as a line item. And uh, so we were interested in talking to the uh, town manager and actually seeing if we could actually get that line item back to actually do some meaningful work in town as far as um, for residents that would need it. Um, and uh, my vision, and I'm sure it's the same thing Catherine shared, was uh, for uh, would be things like possibly a senior that needs a ramp or something um rebuilt that we could probably give a grant to or something around that nature um so pro projects like those um also i think would be really meaningful um any other member you guys are willing to share your opinion on or ideas of what you possibly think that uh we could do uh with the funding if we're added back to the to, to that as a budget line or you guys could say whether or not you don't think it's such a great idea. So just let us know. No, I, I think it'll be a good idea if we can get some money out of the town in their budget. I mean, I right now we have uh, $6,370.86 uh, in our account. There's going to be $500 coming out. I would think in the next week or so, because uh, we issued two grants for uh, Ethan Herrera and Dave. Don't say Sitko. the names. Don't say the names. Don't say the names. It's anonymous. Huh. Okay, so we have two grants going out for two fifty apiece, 
and that'll bring us probably somewhere around fifth. I, I won't know what the interest is till next time we have a meeting, I get a report, but we'll be around $5,800. So we do have some money to spend. So at least everybody knows where we stand right now. Um, well, help me out here. We, we sponsor like a picnic in the summer and then Thanksgiving dinner and then Christmas, kind of a Christmas gathering or holiday gathering. So does that come out of existing funds? Does that come out of TR? Um, so those right. funds are usually taken out of the advisory committee and then the recreation department also puts in uh, funds for that. And then I apply annually for the MDC grants, which they've been contributing towards the events um, for the past few years. So that's about another $500 um, a year that we spend for those events. All together? Yes. So Natalie, um, as you know, your input is very valuable here as we are all new. Um, what are your thoughts as far as us being added back to the to the budget and as a line, on, on the line as a line item on the budget for uh, us getting money? Well, I do think that uh, having it as a line item would be able to give the committee funds to work with in order to improve the lives of those in Weathersfield. And I, like you mentioned earlier, I think being able to target all age groups is important and especially when it comes to accessing the community. So definitely having funds available for ramps or whether it's like house improvements so they can stay in their home rather than having to go elsewhere. I think that would be more meaningful. You know, the committee would have to make a decision as to how high of a grant they would be issuing and how many a year like we do with the mini grants, but also, um, maybe also have input on other committees as to what's going to make it more accessible for our residents as well. Natalie, um, the two grants that were that are giving out this month without saying names, of course, uh, can you give us a sense of what those are for? Were they for summer programming? Sure, those are for younger campers who are looking to get involved in our therapeutic recreation programs for the summer. I mean, from your vantage point, of course, there's never, there's never enough resource and always enough need, but um, seeing as we have a $6,000 right now, um, I mean, what, if you had, how many more campers would you think would need that kind of grant that you could, that you could just think of off the top of your head? Um, I would probably say at least three. I think I don't, I'm not, I'd have to check with social and youth services, but we have money that has sat there as well for, we gave them a thousand dollars towards camperships for anyone with special needs that applied. So I'm not sure how much of that we've used. I want to say that we used maybe three the year we gave it out. And last year we didn't do anything. So they might have another couple of camperships there as well. Yeah, and I always refer them. I always refer them to both social use services and to our committee if it's someone who has a special need that could help them in you know either department and then also check in with them to see if they would be able to make increment payments so that we're looking at giving them as much access and as much assistance as possible. Yeah, and I just think, you know, we all know this summer is critical um, for, for so many kids. And uh, I, I, would, I would just say positive that we would think about as a committee, if um, maybe if Natalie gets back to us in the near future, we think about extending our grants a little bit for this summer. Just something to think about. I, I'm, I'm just putting it out there that it's, it, you know, as it, as it comes across to the top of my mind, because I think, think that 
I think that kids deserve it more than ever. Um, if I, if you guys don't mind, can I, well, let me, let me open the discussion. What do the folks think? Is that a good use of our money to extend ourselves a little more? I know John Beretta loves to spend the money. So he always wants it. He always wants it to be used for a good purpose. You got it. It's not well, reasonable to, to me. I mean, if kids have been either um, remote or hybrid and um, they may be losing ground or just not, you know, um, socializing as they might otherwise be and uh if that makes i i seem to remember therapeutic rec was pretty reasonable but there might be i mean natalie would know and there might be parents who lost a job or just they just have economic hardship and that's going to be the difference between them not attending versus attending i say it's a good idea yeah and i, uh, I think you're absolutely right Go ahead, Natalie, I, I'll yield to you. Sorry, I was just going to say that if we were to get more grants, I would definitely share it with the committee that we had additional requests that I think we should fund and that way it would be open for the committee to vote on whether or not we should access those funds even though it might be over our uh, maximum for that um, quarter just so that we're still addressing the needs. N Natalie, could you also help us as members to understand how the, the program uh, operates as far as the limit? Is there a limit um, for the amount of grants that we could actually give out per quarter? Um, how does that all tie in? Sure. So in the past, we agreed that we would uh, give two grants of up to $250 every quarter and that the individual who did receive the grant would not be able to reapply for up to two years so that we could access as many um, members of the community that might need assistance rather than it always being the same individual. And a, a follow-up question, if I may. And so if we wanted to, I'm taking it that if we wanted to extend this or open this up more to uh, let's say more than two applicant per quarter. Um, would that would that require a vote from the uh, committee? Um, I don't know that it would require, but it might be a good idea to just do that so we can have an idea of the true um, acceptance of increasing it. That way, we know that the committee, as a whole, is definitely in the same direction. Nelly, if I'm uh, how many kids did you say could need it for the summer? Maybe another three. Another three. Of. Yeah. So so why don't we just extend it for the the three and let it sit there and then we can discuss it later on, you know, uh, at our next meeting, how many more grants we want to put out. I don't think we can, I, I don't know if we can hand pick though. I think we have to just, I'm not sure, Natalie, you tell me, but my sense is that we'd have to open it up generally um, and, and have people apply knowing that there is more resource available and then assess the applications. Right, and we would, we would never um, turn anyone away. And, and, you know, again, if we had gotten three and if we had only enough for two, that was something I would bring up to the committee and say, we had one additional this time and it's time sensitive, it's for camp, do we want to approve it? Um, right now, I could think of maybe three that might need the, the grant for the summer if they were going to register. I don't know that anyone thinks that they're cut off from, from um, applying because technically they, they only apply when they are looking for funds. So no one has said to them, oh, we've met our two minimum we're not going to take any more applications until um, September. So we haven't done anything like that, but um, we would but always bring it up to the committee. Yeah, I'm guessing it's very much word of mouth and obviously you guys are encouraging them when you know there's something available. So I don't, 
I don't think we should take people not applying as not having that need kind of. Right. I mean, uh, Natalie, is it, is it, can we just, uh, oh, how can we do this? How can we get the information to these people? Because I know we've sent out flyers, everything for grants and um, I mean, very few come in. I mean, we could ask to have an, not an ad, but a, a notice put in the rare reminder and see if it, if anybody responds with a need. Um, or you could have it uh, go out as a um, an email from the town manager's office. Um, Mr. Carzer, do you have, I mean, I guess the way, the kind of directory you would have for parents of kids with special needs would just be through each school or through the SEPTO? So we do have, um, uh, oh, sorry, Catherine, um, through School Messenger, we do have the availability to do in addition with that. And I do have a um, separate, um, and I'll call it email link to all parents who have children that are being serviced for uh, special ed. So I do have that availability. If you have like a letter or something that you want to send out, I can do a uh, you know introduction email and then send a letter out to them. So if we did that, we'd have to be prepared to get you know many more than we can actually support. And so, um, yeah, I, I think it sounds to me like the way it's generally worked is that um, there's a little bit of advertising, but it's also that. Um, Natalie and Jaleem have a sense of who needs it and or you know how, know how to extend it and encourage people to apply maybe. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just think we have to make sure that um, we're being as accessible as possible. And maybe part of this conversation is for the next quarter. Maybe I'm just kind of getting ahead of, my, of myself, but I'm just thinking more about the way that we, uh, this process, that's all. Mm. Is there is there a social media page as well? We we kind of talked about this last meeting too. Like how how do we reach out to more people and just kind of let people know that like this committee exists, for example, too. I guess it'd be sort of the same the same way of just reaching out to more people. And I think we were kind of we we're we we're planning on kind of asking Natalie at this meeting too, like what kind of what kind of outreach. That we can I, have. Definitely, I definitely think we should, I mean, I'd be happy to volunteer to go to SEPTO and, um, you know, the, the parents special education um, association and let folks know. I know we've done that a little bit in the past, but I think um, that we, special education parents are a, you know, are amazing advocates, right? And they're, they're used to advocating for their children. So if we tell them, here's a committee of people that want to hear what your needs are, um, and you can sit as you know public comment or listen in and have some ideas. I think that would be really enriching to our discussion. So I'd be very happy to go to the the, the townwide you know district meeting. That sounds good. When is their meeting? So it has been put on hold with COVID. Um, and we haven't had, we had a couple uh, at the beginning of online meetings, but since then we've had no virtual meetings. Um, I can get in touch with the, uh, the two co-presidents just to find out, you know, if they're gonna redo it in the near future. Yeah, I'll, I can email you, John, if you want, or you can do an email introduction to me and I'm, I can connect right with them. Okay. I know the ones at my, my school, but I don't know the um, district-wide folks. I mean, Catherine, if you need somebody to go with you, I'm more than glad to go with you and yeah. see if we can get some of this money out. Yeah, so, um, oh, I'm not taking notes and I was taking notes. Jaleem, are you taking notes? You look like you have a pen and paper though. What's that gonna, are you, are you pen yeah. and paper? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm keeping it, okay. I get my notes going too. No, I'll compare. Compare. Uh -huh. um, if if it's okay, 
can we segue into a, another topic that I had on our agenda that does not exist in writing, but does exist uh, in our new business folder here in my head. Um, so I had asked John specifically, of course, John Carzar is welcome at every meeting, but I'd asked him specifically to come today um, to give everyone a little commercial of what Weathersfield is offering. Um, of course, you know, big federal funds were received by the districts and um, focus on recovery services and enrichment. Um, and so we'd love to hear kind of what's, I, I guess, you know, with a, with a focus on the special education population, but if you wanna just quickly say what's available to everybody and then say um, the options for special education students and of course, extended school year being um, on that menu of options. Yep. So maybe I'll uh, start off with uh, ESY. So ESY is our extended school year. And uh, basically ESY is for uh, two purposes for uh, special ed students. It's for um, students at either their ability to, well, their regression during the summer can't be recouped within the first couple of weeks, you know, a couple of months of school. And so they need services to re really help with that regression recoupment. Um, second is just that their the nature and the intensity of the disability really dictates more need for ongoing summer program through the year. And so right now we'll be running our ESY program um, starting on July 5th, but since July 5th is the, um, when we're celebrating 4th of July, um, that's actually gonna be off, um, but run, running Monday through Thursday for uh, one month for four weeks um, straight. At the current time we have, I think it was approximately 100 students that are enrolled and that's uh, K through 12. Um, and also some other students within that program, and especially some of our olden students that we, um, uh, we offer uh, slots in uh, Camp Sunrise uh, in Glastonbury as really a way of um, you know, meeting their social emotional needs in more of a camp setting than the uh, truly academic setting. Um, on top of that, and so that's you know, basically general, even though our numbers are a little higher this year, uh, because we, you know, we have seen, uh, you know, definitely students not being able to attain the same, um, you know, progression of uh, their goals and objectives, just because they have been virtual, they've been hybrid, um, you know, a variety of other settings that we've had throughout the year, whether they've been quarantined or class has been quarantined, uh, but also through uh, some of the uh, funds that we've received. And so this is more general ed, um, but I, as I always say, we have to remember that special ed, our general ed students first. And so everything that is available for all our general ed students need to be available for our special ed students. And so we do have some uh, programs under class. And while now I'm gonna to try to remember what class stands for. Uh, continue, continue learning across summer sessions. And so we're gonna have both elementary and secondary uh, um, many courses under class. Some of them are, and I'll call them transition classes. So transition to kindergarten, transition to middle school to really help that transition because they're going into a new school. Um, and for some students, they've been out of school, uh, you know, for a year. And then we also have some, uh, I'll call them mini courses. Uh, some are purely academic. Um, you know, literacy courses, math skills programs, um, literacy, math, and that's across the grades, uh, whether it's a grade one, we have another class in grade two for both those, and then combination of like grade three for both literacy um, booster and math booster. Um, and then we have some, and I'll call it more integrated classes, but around different themes. Um, some examples of uh, uh, one is for uh, grades one, two, three using story time yoga. Um, and so really get them back used to, uh, you know, that classroom atmosphere and with other students. Um, uh, courses in American Sign Language. I'm going through uh, art and music. Um, you know, some uh, um, courses around uh, um, STEM, but around science, and just a variety of different mini courses 
that we're really using different theme areas to help students integrate back into classrooms and to help them with academics, but in a maybe a different, you know, not truly academic setting using some themes to um, engage them better in the uh, classes. Um, as we're moving up to uh, oops, middle school and high school, we are looking, well, especially high school um, credit recovery and using some ingenuity because we do have some students that, uh, you know, unfortunately are losing credit because um, they're either, a, you know, ability to uh, engage virtually um, or the going back and forth in a hybrid model. Um, so with this, I know this has been put out there for um, all students, um, you know, to participate and to parents, uh, but then, you know, working with our special ed staff to make sure that when we're discussing special ed needs, if uh, a child is not um, appropriate for the ESY, that they're also able to take care of uh, some of the needs through the uh, mini courses class that's being offered. Yeah, so will there be like case management for those students, um, like, the, like the students you talked about who don't qualify for ESY, but you know, really need a boost during the summer? Yep, so not strict case management, but we do, did hire another um, staff member over the summer, a social worker who is gonna be trying to help integrate our, um, and I'll say it, our ESY, so our special ed and general ed um, students. And since it is, being offered in the same building of maybe able to do some uh, more inclusive practices. Um, typically ESY is only for special ed students, but now where we sort of have other classes being offered in the summer, we're trying to integrate it more with inclusive practices. Um, our number one uh, goal is to develop high quality inclusive practices. And usually in the summer, we don't have the availability to do that because it is only um, special ed students as part of ESY, but now with a combination, we are looking at how to do that. We did the hiring, I think it was actually just a week and a half ago. So trying to look at that position and how they're in, gonna integrate both the class program and the ESY program. Is there any transportation involved in this? So with ESY, there is transportation. Um, for the class program, there is not. And so with that, it's really, uh, you know, counting on uh, parents or family members to get, you know, children in. Um, with that ESY is really as part of the IEP, uh, most students that really fit that regression recruitment or the intensity of the disability also qualify for uh, specialized transportation. So we do have buses that run for them. Okay. Yeah, I think obviously ideally class would have had a transportation element as well. Um, but, you know, I, I think that that's really critical for probably a lot of the students who need it the most. Yeah. Um, have, you, have you heard of parents or families sharing that that's a barrier for them to do any of the programs? For some, it's always a barrier, whether it's because they're working, whether it's, you know, they have some sort of sitting service going on, um, a variety of things. I, I know this two things for, um, transportation and like special ed that is budgeted in there. Um, okay. Really difficult for general ed. And the other issue right now, um, unfortunately, our transportation uh, agencies are having a hard time finding drivers. Mm. Um, and that's just in general. And I, I have a feeling summer is gonna be even worse because there's a lot of uh, bus drivers that um, you know do have families of their own. And so it really works out to have it as, um, you know, equal to the school day because that's when they can get home to their families. Um, the other thing, even for the classes, um, it's been a difficult year for everyone, but teachers included. And so I know a lot of teachers that uh, right now we're, and that's where I just came from a meeting, uh, really looking at ESY teachers. I'm not having the same number of teachers apply because, you know, they're, they're trying to take a break from uh, what they've had to uh, deal with this year. So we're reaching out to um, other agencies like CREC to see if they have some uh, teachers available for that. Yeah. Um, I, one thing I, about the class, it sort of helps is, especially around some of those other activities, it's really going to what some of the teachers are passionate about. You know, so just taking the yoga class, that's not somebody who developed that because we said, hey, how would you like to teach yoga? They're like, no, I could develop a class around yoga because my passion is there. 
and drawing the you know students engagement through their own passion. So that has helped out the class program in some ways it may have hurt us because um, you know it's um, uh, you know the direct instruction versus maybe some classes that you know teachers have more of an interest. It's not the same thing as what I did all school year. Um, it's something a little different in uh, you know an activity either I engage in or have a passion in. Do you know how the enrollment is looking for a class? That I do not, since it's been more general ed, you know, focused on general ed. And um, uh, two teachers have uh, taken the, um, the role of the uh, class. It's uh, Steph McKenna at the um, secondary level and uh, Jen Lindsay Hammer on the uh, elementary level. And I have not seen what enrollment is like. I don't think I have access. I'll see if I have access to that and if I do. Yeah, just to give us a sense, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping it's hoping it's good and filled and people are, are utilizing it. I'm sure there's they're they're getting the word out. I know I've gotten a couple emails, so. Yeah. Yeah, at least offhand, I don't see. Sorry, yeah. look up class enrollment. I get a lot of different things, but not what I'm looking for for this specific program. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, I, I appreciate the, the realities of staffing challenges. And I was talking to a special ed director today and she said that she had two ESY teachers quit this morning. And, you know, I know people are just so burnt out. Um, meanwhile, I mean, kids are burnt out too. Parents are burnt out, but on the flip side, they they need um, they need to be able to make progress. And I think it's exciting that they can do so in a way that's still fun for them. Um, There's so many ways to make, you know, those kinds of enrichment subjects uh, help them still progress towards their goals and objectives. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate that. I think, think it was an innovative tactic and I would hope next year there is transportation. So we could, we could help lobby for that together. So you broke up there a minute. I'm not sure if that's me or if it's, so is that last sentence? Sorry, either... No, it's me in the, oh. sorry. Any other questions you guys have for John? Okay. I forgot to share the link um, with everybody that John sent a, a link to a Google doc. Um, a couple months ago that he, he wanted us to add questions to if we had. Um, and I, I want to add it to the chat to the last Zoom meeting, but we didn't have, uh, we don't have a chat in here. So I was going to email it to everybody and I um, completely um, forgot nice. about it. But um, I know that I know that we did have a document. Yeah, where's the, yeah, I don't see a chat. Well, I, also, I know. Um, I also want, I know I had mentioned at the last meeting that we were waiting for guidance from the state as to, um, you know, what districts were going to be encouraged to do uh, to, again, with it, with some of their money and what they had to do to fulfill their legal responsibility to make sure kids were getting those recovery services. So that document has now just come out like a week or so ago. I can share that with people. Um, and maybe we can talk at the next meeting, John, about, you know, what Weathersfield is doing specifically to meet the um, to meet the obligations of that guidance. I know the exciting prospect for you to, for me to ask you questions on that, but um, it's good stuff. It's good stuff, but boy, I can tell you, I don't know how they're going to make up five in five weeks what they lost in a year. I, I just can't see it. But and that's it, only for that's only for kids who typically have you know the most high need disabilities. I mean, yeah, I I, I just can't see how they're going to make it up, but. I, I I just don't don't know. I mean, I I talked to the bureau chief of special education last week, and he kind of reminded us that 
this is supposed to be a process and this is not supposed to be cram everything. I mean, cram everything in, in the summer and try to get to where you were supposed to, in air quotes, be. Um, it's challenging to hold yourself back because that's what we want for our kids. But I think we have to think of this as a long-term, um, you know, a long-term endeavor, it's, really. It's too bad they can't extend one year. I mean, I guess right now it's, once they're 21, they're out. Just extend it for the kids that have missed the year. Yeah. John, 22. It's 22 now. The court has ruled. 22? The AR yeah, ruling says you get special education services now that happen through the, the end of your 21st year equals your 22nd birthday. Yeah, but it, it's still, I, it would be nice if they could extend it one more year. Yeah. But and, and some of that, it helps transition that 22nd birthday, then adult services start on that 22nd birthday. So, um, you know, it, it's unfortunate that it impacts like some graduations and things like that. But at least then it's like continuous, um, you know, and I'll say school based special ed services, 22nd birthday, then adult services for whoever uh, is eligible for adult services. Oh, okay. I, John, if you didn't mind, I had a question on the on the sheet. Well, I think it's helpful, John, as a, a parent. Sorry. No, I'm up. I'm fine. Go ahead, Adam. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I just had a question that she. Um, mostly, I'm just kind of curious about um, for for students who are. Who are blind, for example, and they use assistive technology, are are they are they taught like in in the younger years how to how to sort of use that technology, um, like in the classroom if they're using a computer, for example? Because some I know people can grow up into like into adulthood and still um, not be like familiar with with assistive technology that they need to use. So I'm wondering like if it's if it's sort of taught early on or. Are you, you're muted, John. No, I'm sorry. I was trying to unmute. It wasn't clicking. Um, yeah. So I'll look at um, two things. I mean, first of all, um, with students who are blind, there's also um, uh, the BESB services. And so they do work with school systems um, to provide services. Um, but also, we've done a lot of work uh, regarding um, our AT practices, um, um, including um, uh, we've uh, developed a uh, task force um, who uh, were one of eight districts in the nation doing the CITES, um, C-I-T-E-S, um, and that really is looking at our um, AT um, you know, progress and uh, working with other um, districts in the nation around that. So we've combined um, really the IT with the special ed um, to provide the appropriate AT services. Um, and done a lot of work with, with that. So with that, yes, um, you know, students and I'll, you know, not only blind, students that are blind, but uh, students with any disability, um, you know, we go through the um, wow, AT um, consideration um, of what is needed. Um, so especially, and I'll say uh, in the past uh, three years under um, Sarah Harris, who's our IT, uh, one of our uh, supervisors and Liz Friedis, um, they've really done a lot of work, um, who's our special ed supervisor um, with AT and really combining IT with special ed. That's, that's awesome, thank you, it's really interesting. I, I'm always just curious about it because like I said, there's sometimes you know, students who are in college and higher ed, um, like them being able to use, a, use assistive technology on, on their computer would it's, it's, it's a requirement for them, it's necessary. And they still are, they're not super familiar with it. So I was just kind of wondering where the, like where the training yep. usually starts. So even before, but I think we've just gotten better with the uh, AT consideration. And I'm just looking at the site's information right now um, because with it, we have, yeah, so, um, 
We have a long-term long -term commitment with sites to try out evidence-based evidence practices and provide clinical feedback on what works to build an inclusive technology ecosystem. Um, and with that, we have a team, and I think it's about 20 staff members, which is special ed, general ed, related services, OTs, administration, uh, to really continue working on our, uh, uh, you know, our assistive technology and really uh, looking at universal design for all learners and you know, how we can provide that AT to help um, our students with disabilities. Universal design is, yeah, something that higher ed is finally starting to catch on to more now too, um, which is, there's too, there's so many good things to say about universal design. There's, there's, yeah. it's all, it's all, it's all beneficial. It really has no drawbacks. So I don't know why, I don't know why it's not more widely adopted now, but yeah, so we've trained all our uh, special ed teachers, at least in the introductory training. Um, right now, the high school is running with it uh, probably a little faster than everyone else. Um, all their um, um, core subject liaisons uh, have been through uh, um, three hour long trainings on top of that to then look at how do we design that uh, within the content area, but looking at how we move forward um, with UDL in all our schools. Awesome, it's awesome to hear, thank you. I'll be our next item of business. Um, grants? But I believe we kind of touched on that earlier. Uh, yeah, well, you're right, Jaleel, we, we, we did cover that. But I just want to uh, make sure we are all on the same page here. Um, were we going to, um, I guess, give Natalie, the, or were we giving Natalie the okay to open it up for the applications for this quarter as far as the campers for the grants go. I think we're giving her the okay. Yeah, I, yes. I have no problem with You're it. Wondering how, yeah, how far to stretch that, I think. Just a quick question. Yeah. Would, would the camp be a, a substitute for the in-class learning or do they somehow complement each other? Natalie, do you know how the timing works? Or Jaleen, do you know how the timing works with um, the therapeutic rec camp and ESY? It's are there people who are in both? Well, uh, typically the ESY is in the morning and then they get bussed over to our program. We changed the program years ago so that the families could take part in both programs and get a full, as much of a full day as possible. So special, I'm um, sorry, Therapeutic Rack runs Monday through Friday, 11.30 to 3.30. We do have morning extensions and afternoon extensions in case they're not doing ESY and in case they want to add an hour at the end of the day because it, it meets their schedule. And I haven't seen the bus schedules yet, Natalie, but I'm sure we'll have the same thing that we have some students going straight from web school um, over to sites for uh, the summer programs. Thank you. Sounds good. So is there anything else um, that any member uh, would like to discuss that's not on the agenda? Since I think we've already covered everything on the agenda. Anyone have more success with 
the group home, reach out. Or just I haven't I haven't gotten anything yet. Um, matter of fact, I uh, talked to Jay about I didn't when he sent out the uh, the group home list. I didn't even see the one on prospect on his list, so he was going to send me the information on that. Yeah, um, for my part, I'm a little bit, um, I, maybe if you could resend that document, uh, I had requested um, to um, communicate with the Eastern Drive because that's really near where my house is, but uh, I didn't know if I, uh, if I was reassigned. So I apologize. I guess I didn't understand there was a document out there that assigned. If you can send that along. Yeah, I'll resend it. Or to me at least. Who has the one that you're that you want to be assigned to? Do you know? Or we could I think switch. somebody. Uh, I can't remember, but it was reported in a previous meeting. Okay. Well, we can do a switch. I'm sure. It would be kind of. So I guess it would be, next yeah, it would be kind of nice uh, because I also am the kind of the acting secretary of Wells Quarter Village. So um, that's a little homeowner uh, communication that we have. Yeah. So it would be kind of an easy way to include them. Oh, that reminds me. I had an idea for another way to use money. Um, I just found out a, a friend of mine who's a massage therapist works in different group homes. Wait, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, it says it's again. This is torture. Um, who goes to different group homes and does you know massage therapy for the residents? And I said to her, Are there ever people that aren't able to afford it? Do you see people having different needs? Um, so, you know, we could maybe even have her come to another meeting, a, a public comment meeting. Um, I know it's, it might sound you um, a way to support people on group homes who um, aren't getting that, that, you know, that healing power of touch and affection and might be a way to uh, provide support. And maybe um, and working with those folks and what 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 she sees is their needs. Would people be interested in learning more about that? Sure, why not? Yeah, Any, why not? Anything to help. <laughs> it's a ringing endorsement. Okay, I'm gonna invite her to the next meeting because she's a really nice person and I think it's really, really good work, so. All right. Uh, the last thing I know we have on our to-do list also, Paul, is the, well, we were going to ask Natalie for the Word document of the directory, I think, um, the directory that we wanted to update. You are correct. So unfortunately, the last time that document was created was quite a few years ago and the individual that was in charge of it uh, went out of state and has had some medical conditions so that we're not able to access that document. So recreating it, it would have to be retyped each section. So when we decide to put it together, it'll probably be the individual in charge of pages, let's say, for example, pages one through five, that person would be responsible for retyping in a set um, fonts and size and et cetera to be added to someone else's because we do not have the full document. I, I can try downloading the current one and, and seeing what it looks like if I just export it from from PDF to Word. Um, okay. It might it might get all like jumbled up and sort of incomprehensible, but I'm um, gonna give it a shot. I just have to find uh, the link to it again. I know I have it. 
Thanks, Adam. I think I had the link that you sent to us last time. I put it on the um, on the members list that I sent out earlier. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, there it is. It's um, services for people with disabilities, 2009. 70, 73 pages. Sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it looks like it was like scanned um, and then scanned from a, like from a physical PDF maybe and then OCR'd um, to, to make the actual content like copy and pasteable. So I'll see what, I'll see what happens with it. Okay, any other business? You might want to vote on money to give Jalene for the TR picnic that we normally hold in July. Was that knock on wood? I uh, know I'm trying to get into my house. Somebody locked me out. <laughs> you knock on wood. Okay, I'll knock on wood for you. How much do you need that one? I'm sorry, what was that? How much do you need? Uh, well, normally we get $70 for the picnic. And then if we need to ask for more, then we ask for more. That's fine with me. I support that. So can we have a formal motion? I guess, John, you're making it, right? Yeah, I uh, make a motion to support Natalie with the uh, therapeutic picnic in the amount of $70. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do, you need, do you need any other help with that picnic? Well, I would ask Jaleen since he's running the picnic, but usually there is cooking, serving, prepping, possibly games, all good stuff. Jillian, do you have like Natalie, a Natalie, what is the date of the picnic? Jillian, do you have a date for the picnic yet? No, I do not. Um, hopefully we can talk about it this week. <laughs> Sounds good. Once uh, Jillian decides, we can send it out to the group. Um, do you usually have a volunteer group to help with this or is this part of the TR staff? How has that all worked out in the past? Usually the committee gets involved and assists and attends and helps out. And we also have TR staff if we need it and then have end up paying somebody. Yeah. Um, Julie, maybe you can develop a uh, sign up list. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah, I mean, we would like to help do that for yeah. your family. If it's obviously, as long as everyone's comfortable with that. Um, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be outside. Google Doc. You, you might want to have a rain date. Typically, we have an indoor site at the community center, and we offer outdoor services as well for the picnic. And typically, everybody just stays in, not wanting to go outside, even though we've had uh, tables set up. So we've done the community center so that if it's too hot, people can be inside. If it's raining, we're still having the picnic. Well, just get, give us the dates and then... We can take it from there. I mean, I, I'm sure I'll be available at night. Hopefully there's nothing coming up. I can, I'll cook whatever you want. I don't care. If, if you have it outside, do you have picnic tables? Do people bring stuff or do everybody eat inside? So we've set up tables with chairs, not picnic tables. Or oh, I'm in. We do have picnic tables on the premises since we do have camp programs going on. Yeah. 
but then we also have the indoor tables and chairs and typically everybody brings an appetizer, a dessert, chips, fruit, stuff like that. We take care of the hamburgers, hot dogs, some of the condiments, stuff like that. And um, we reserve the grill from the fire department and cook that evening. I just think people might, given we're not quite out of the woods with COVID yet, we, people might want to be a little more oriented to outdoors, unless, of course, it rains. Okay. How do we, how do we officially end this, Paul? I forget. You make a motion to end it? What do we do? Yeah, you're right. You're in the right ball. But, um, so um, we have no further business on our agenda. Um, and there's no further comments from or any new business that any member would like to bring up. Um, would like to call this meeting to adjourn. Um, so I make, the, a, I make a what, motion. To, uh, uh, what meeting going to be? Sorry, John, I didn't hear you. When is our next meeting? All right. Such a calendar. Is it August 2nd? Be every, don't we do it every says, other? It says July for a picnic in September after that. Yeah, September 13th. September 13th? Yes. I mean, if there's any business that has to be done, I guess in the meantime, over the summer, I guess we can do it over the phone or through emails if we have to vote on something. Well, I'll send I'll send Jaleem and Natalie the like the Word document version of that document and we can sort of just look through it and uh, see what needs to be done. And then sort of like, a, like Natalie was saying, assign assign different like groups of pages. Yeah, that sounds like a good service project for a high school student. Yeah. So maybe we'll oh, go back. Or, or an intern from Jaleen, just saying. Do you have one, Jaleen? I have two working interns this year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they need, you're definitely going to need to fill in their time. <laughs> Boy, he That's must be noted. something special, Natalie. You never had interns. <laughs> Free labor. Okay, so are we gonna, let's, um, I guess everyone just pay attention to your email because we have a few loose ends to tie up. So um, I will send out the minutes with highlighted to-dos. Jalene, you can maybe send me a picture of your minutes and I will incorporate them into my minutes. <laughs> And uh, you check over the highlighted to do items, and uh, we can all report via email. And I can look forward to seeing folks at the July meeting. I think I just froze. Sorry, it's my cue to end. <laughs>